On the 18th of January 1871, the German Empire was officially declared and William I of Prussia was declared the German Emperor. Previously, what we now know as Germany had been a confederation of princely states for over a thousand years. There were significant cultural, educational, linguistic and religious differences amongst these states during this time, but as the 19th century progressed, so did communications technology, which brought the peoples of these states closer together than ever before. With his acute understanding of real politic, Otto von Bismarck, the leader of Prussia, directed German unification, and it was Prussia that dominated the process. Uniting the southern states was difficult, as they were mostly Catholic and anti-militaristic, in contrast to the conservative state of Prussia. The Second Schleswig War in 1864 enabled Bismarck to promote himself as the defender of the German nation from Danish oppression, using nationalism as a vital tool. The Franco-Prussian War of 1870 to 1871 saw further demonstrations of nationalism from Bismarck and encouragingly the seven states rallied behind Prussia against the French. Alsace-Lorraine was gained as a result of the Prussian victory and shortly after this German unification was declared. There were many obstacles to unification. One problem was that of German dualism. Kleindeutsche Lushung, the small Germany solution, meant Germany without Austria, and Großdeutsche Lushung, the greater Germany solution, meant Germany with Austria. Kleindeutsche Lushung won out, as demonstrated by the Seven Weeks War in 1866. The war occurred after Prussia demanded control of the German Federation, which was an organization of 39 German states that replaced the dissolved Holy Roman Empire in 1815. Austria predictably refused Prussia's demands and thus war broke out. The war culminated with a heavy Austrian defeat at the Battle of Königgrätz. Victory for Prussia, therefore, played a large role in their dominance of unification. Despite war driving unification, Bismarck appeased liberals by creating a constitution which established universal manhood suffrage and vested substantial power in a two-house parliament, the Reichstag. What were the underlying reasons for German unification? Alongside the Industrial Revolution, there was a surge in German nationalism, based on the importance of tradition, education and linguistic unity of the Germanic peoples in the region. This was supported by shared experiences in the Napoleonic Wars, fighting alongside Prussia, and also by European liberalism, which intellectually challenged the dynastic monopolies. The creation of a unified Germany had a huge effect on Europe and destabilised the balance of power, something that came to the fore in 1914 and the start of the First World War. It remains an alliance of states with distinct characteristics and traits and despite road bumps in the early 20th century, it lives on unified under the flag of Germany. Thanks for watching this 4 minute history on the unification of Germany. And please look in the description below for books and movies you should check out for a more detailed and nuanced look at all things associated with it. If you found that interesting, you may be interested in another 4 minute history on an array of topics throughout human history. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon.